the measure may be passed and adopted at any time after such reading. And see, copies of the titles of the proposed ordinances and resolutions here to which board have mentioned shall be posted in the City Hall 96 hours before the hour of the City Council. The council convenes and act upon the ordinances or resolutions. During the said 96 hour period, copies of the entire proposed ordinance or resolution here to board mention should be made available for inspection by the public at any time during the city's regular business hours. In the event that copies are not so made available to the public for inspection and said title is not so posted, the ordinance resolution shall not be brought before the council for action. I have a comment on this. Um, in this, uh, my comments are going to apply to C and little seven and ten. Um, I think we ought to um, um, uh, talk a little bit about the electronic means of communication that maybe we could add something like this copies of the titles of proposed ordinances should be posted at City Hall and on the city's official website. Um, it's just is kind of a technological upgrade from five years ago where we had a website that wasn't so active and now it is. And much of much of the city's business is posted on the website, but I think it would I think it would be good to put that into into the code. That not everybody can come down to City Hall to see um, where you know what's posted. But that would be my suggestion. Where are they posted right now? Um, we post them at City Hall in the ADA room. We post them in the San Jose, uh, where the PO boxes are on that first bulletin board. I give a packet to the library, and then there's also the display case in the bottom of Old Bisbee Post Office that I put all of those in. But as well as the website. As well as the website. Yeah, you do post stuff on the website already, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what you're asking, Fred, is, is the I it's just a codified right. that you want on the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost think that, that in terms of notifications throughout this whole document, that's kind of like, uh, you know, adding the, the electronic posting is kind of like, updating the, the stuff about gender and you know it's just like at this you know modern time we should kind of include those changes because that's how we live now and that, that, that this is the time to do that we're going to have rooms code as a public notice for two weeks is that if we put that in here do we have to run that for two weeks with everything else we run one for two weeks Addition and 
on the city's official website, $96. So you're just putting in a, a clause there. Should we also just um, maybe amend the title of that to just posting? Just do that reading and then posting, and then we don't, there's no confusion about the city hall or not. Yes. I think okay, there. if you want, yeah. I just, so just, just to, to amend your, just remove that city oh, hall. Yeah, just remove so those two. Let's do posting of amendments. Let's do two. Just so I'll I make a motion to add the clause and on the city's official website after the word hall and before the word and before the number is 96. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Is it vote? Okay. So I make a motion. Yeah, I make a motion that we change the name of. Seven zero seven C to uh, to remove the words at City Hall, leaving it just posting. Motion is second. We have a second. Okay. Was it there? Aye. Opposed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So where we go, Chairman? <laughs> just a point of order after each one of our. Seconds, so we should open it to discussion. Okay. Oh, discussion we were discussing it before. We were discussing it before, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, you know, let me get the horse and rubbish. We should open it to discussion. Okay, well, I got a lot of where we are. D. 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 Okay. An amendment, if an amendment is proposed to an ordinance, which the council finds to be a substantive change with the ordinance as originally drafted, the council may delay action on the ordinance in order to provide sufficient time for public review or prescribed in subparagraph C of section 7.0.07 of article 7 of the Okay. I, I, is it where it says the council may, it, it seems like this is an important enough thing for the, for the, um, the public to, to just have sufficient time for public review. That that's might we might want to change that to must. Must. No, they don't have to be but the actual function. It should be up to it should be up to them at the council yeah. to decide yeah. if, it, if it needs a little more time mm -hmm. they're not hosted and everything to whatever they call it. Because it could be fun. that they just want to change the word, the phraseology, the phrasing just slightly. Yeah, but it's not this is, no, this is substantive change mm -hmm. in ordinance. It's not it's um, as original draft, it's not it's not stylistic. My thing might suggest though that because it says the council makes a determination of the substantive change, that leaves it open so that the must doesn't work. Because the council could just simply say we don't think it's a substantive change. That's why the word may is in there. Mm -hmm. It's because they either will or they won't. Well, I mean, you could have an argument over that and might go to the court or something like that. But I mean, if it, 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 it changes the actual substance of it rather than the style of the wording, that's pretty clear. That's a fairly straightforward thing. Right. Like it's 10 days rather than three days, or, you know, I mean, that's the, the substance of the amendment. I don't think that's unclear. Or, well, I think, I don't know that anybody would not say that's not substantive, you know. Right, I mean, but if somebody, if a council was to say, oh, we, we didn't post this, we're saying it's not substantive, and they actually made a substantive change, people, they could be held to task. I mean, I mean, if they weren't posting it. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not arguing, Johnny. I'm, I'm indicating that, but that's where the word subjective comes from it means just that what you think is 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 a important thing may not be what someone else does and therefore that's subjective if it's not objective whereas clear black and white is objective subjective is, is dependent on the person and the circumstances what they believe uh, the change may be so the word in here right now is subjective that's why the word may is if you want that change, I'm suggesting that you 
take subjective out of there. Actually, it's not subjective, it's substantive. Substantive, that's a totally different word and different concept. So I don't think that applies. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, but I, it seems to me it's saying that the council has an ordinance for both, right? And then, mm -hmm. somebody up, and then somebody proposes an amendment to the proposed ordinance. And the council takes a look at it and says, um, well, I, I think we need more time on this. Or they say, no, I don't think we need any more time on this. Before you're aware, it's not true. It's a substantive change. It's been talked about, and we can just pass it or not pass it. No, I mean, what this thing is, if you if they they posted the um, the the um, uh, originally drafted the originally drafted thing, right. and then in last the last minute they decide to make an amendment, a change to it, a, sub, a substantive change to it. This is saying that they may allow more time for posting that change so that the, the, the public can read it and weigh in on it, um, rather than just last minute, you know, voting on something that hasn't been reviewed by the public. And I'm saying that it would be nice for you know, the public interest to, to say that if they're going to make a substantive change to an amendment, that they give that full three days or 96 hours to, to read it and consider it. I think the problem is the definition of, of sub, substantive is subjective to the individual. So, so not, and, and it is, that's, that's personal understanding of what is substantive. I don't think so legally. I think legally if it changes the, the facts of you know of, of what it's doing rather than just the style. But the council but it's, it's not legal. If the council is deciding that, then that can be challenged at some time. But the council is the decider. And they're deciding yes the amendment is substantive and we need more time. Or no it's not substantive or it's substantive but it adds to the ordinance uh, which we approved to begin with, then it's okay. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I don't think you want to handcuff the council. Exactly. That's how I do. Yeah, this way, okay. well, you have to trust your council. You have to trust your council. Right? Well, so, can all they represent that? So, I mean, I, this, we keep getting to the same, mm -hmm. the, the same kind of two sides of the argument where we got to trust the council. But if we're going to just trust the council, then you should throw this whole document out. Well, that's what you're saying. For the camps, this is a garden that comes in the city of Pittsburgh. That's a gray area. There's, there's not going to be, we don't want to go extremely black and white. We need to keep giving them some flexibility. Okay. I, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll agree with that. Like, you no, know, this is, we are purposely saying that this is a gray area. We want to give them flexibility on it. That's fine. But in terms of the overall argument of we don't want to handcuff the council. Uh, I mean, that's what this whole document is for, is to give guidelines and structure and limits to the council. I like the way I like the way I agree with everything else you said. You don't think that, that this limits the council provides structure, but not necessarily and direction. Limits. But how does it not provide no, limits? They can't go beyond the wording of this document. This is this is the limit on the power of the council. It tells them what they are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. That limits their ability. I mean, I, I don't. Is this that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a half. It's it's a class half empty, half full. Well, it's, it's somebody it's said you say the limit. Somebody else says it does provides the authority to do the job, which is a positive statement. You're providing the negative of it. It's a limit to them. Well, it does authority, authority and limits. Well, okay. well, I think well limits is subjective. Not to throw that word out again. Mm -hmm. Well, I think is. we're off topic here. Yeah, yeah we, we are. are. Okay. Look, I mean, if, if nobody. I, I like the way it's presented. I agree. And I'm going to go to seven points. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we go on to 7.08, I would simply have to remind you 
shine that this is a representative form of government. This individual is not the government. We elect people to represent it. It's quite a difference. This is not a pure democracy. What are we all going to vote in? You're going to have to assume when you elect the council, they're representing you. You disagree with their representation, but that's your that's your discussion with them as a council person. Well, I, I fully understand and, and agree with that, but they are allowed to operate within the limits of the law. They can't do things that are outside, and this is the law of the city to a certain extent. This is the structure that gives them the power to operate and limits their ability. They can't do something without posting for 96 hours. They can't, those are limits. They can't do this, they can't do that, they can do this. This is the, the structure within which our government operates. And I think we should recognize that. That's, that's the core of what we're doing here. So just to, to refresh, the primary word is must rather than may, as you said earlier. I, I have no problem letting that go if people say they didn't want yeah. their council to have that flexibility. Okay. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make it. This is a, a larger point that I was making. And I'm sorry for being you. <laughs> 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 All right, so we move on then. We will stay with the heart of the section D on the amendment. So we move on to section 7.08, motions to reconsider. When an ordinance put to vote for final passage fails to pass and a motion is made to reconsider, the vote on such a motion shall not be taken within 24 hours thereafter. And you see how they say shall not? That's like instead of like may not, they say shall not. So, okay, that's that's a legal designation. That was put in there to to harness the power of the council to reconsider an ordinance and shoot it down. Or, That's or right. pass it right away. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so that the money's on the council. Yeah. Exactly. So like, we're all in agreement. Okay. Great. Okay. 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 okay, moving on to section 7.09, signing of ordinances and resolutions. All ordinances and resolutions should be approved as deformed by the city attorney prior to the to signature by the mayor and the attestation by the city clerk within five days after adoption. The failure to so sign and attest shall not affect the validity of such ordinance or resolution. I wrote a note that it goes into effect anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> you guys don't have to sign it or anything. <laughs> As I say, so, well, this would void it if it comes with that yeah. word in language. So that's interesting. Yeah. So we're going to leave there. Sorry, Dave. Okay, let's go to section 7.10 publication of ordinances and resolutions. All ordinances except those necessary for the immediate preservation of the peace, health, or safety of the city. And resolutions having the effect of ordinance shall be published at least once a week for the two consecutive weeks in the official newspaper of the city before they become effective and operative. Emergency measures shall be published twice in the official newspaper of the city within 30 days after their passing. And again, that's what, so after the official newspaper of the city, I would insert and on the city's website before they become effective. And then also publish twice the official newspaper of the city as well as on the city's website within 30 days after their passage. Just the idea, one of the things that, just the background, well, I don't know, a little bit off. One of the backgrounds is that there, um, um, for some time, the legislature has been trying to um, knock out official pronouncements of the city, cities, and um, in newspapers. They want to make everything electronic. Um, and they succeeded in doing that to a certain extent in Maricopa County. They, they no longer have to publish city, publish city notices in newspapers as long as they do electronically. So that's not what my intent is. I want us to have publish in the newspaper 
that out to the point again, but and Fred took part what I was going to say. There's uh, a, a large number of cities nation, nationwide that uh, have gone to electronic media because so people are even reading their newspapers online as we all know. And so many people are no longer getting a paper. Um, and uh, for budgetary reasons, we spend a lot of money um, just in Bisbee every year by having to advertise in the paper where very few people actually see it. So every year, these, uh, every, yeah, these, is it a yearly contract? It's yearly, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With right now, the uh, observer won the contract. Um, and so uh, this is something that um, we, as a city, were hoping you would look at and see if that's really what you want. You can continue. Nina, do you have a, a figure right off the top of your head as to how much we spend um, in, in uh, annual year? No, but I can give you an example of the last one, the, okay. the very last one we did that was very long. It cost almost $600 to publish it in the paper twice. It's 300 and something each time. You have to remember there are people who don't have ongoing service. So that's the, the, the intended, that's partially the intent of this is to um, allow the next charter committee in five years to look at that and if they want to migrate over to and not use official newspapers any longer, just use electronic. Well, you can't buy a newspaper, you know that. Well, yeah, I know what we do. Yeah. Well, maybe but, five um, years it might not want to be dead because that's perfect. So we know you read it online. And those you things are always online. I understand. So, I understand. But um, the observer I online. Guess, I think the know. newspapers are more of a generational issue. Yeah. Um, we have more older adults, senior adults that read newspapers versus yeah. the younger adults. <laughs> If you want to be in that category, it's fine. That, forget it. But, but um, I, I think, like Fred was saying, over time, the newspaper piece may go away. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, but I don't think so right now. What if you tackle the whole thing right now and just say, and, and or the city website, and slash mm -hmm. or, yeah. and then well, you can go. Yeah. Well, we do actually put the ordinances once they're signed, and as I send them to the observer, I also post them on the website. So there's a page dedicated just to ordinances from the time we started this website for every ordinance going forward and for tw through 2019 and starting in 2020. So I do both of that anyway because that way whoever doesn't see it in the paper gets to see it on the website. Great yes. What is the percentage of people uh, do you know? locally that would be possibly excluded if it was only online. Mm -hmm. I know the library talks I do, but it's for the whole website, not just for one page. And we do have a lot of citizens who do not like to use that, but I, I don't know the percentage. Pictures and regulations about what contracts mm -hmm. can be let into and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that's that's the government's um, the administration's responsibility to make a decision about something like that. Not our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Whether they should be advertising or not. The thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that as much information is accessible to the public as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, just to speak to David's point of the, 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 both the cost and the potential for the newspaper to fold. Um, if we're saying it must be posted in the newspaper and it folds in two years, three years before the next charter review, um, here's the answer to that. Here's the answer to that. It says the city's official newspaper. If the newspaper folds and they don't replace that as an, uh, another newspaper with an official newspaper, then there is no official newspaper. So that eliminates the. You have to get a new bid for it. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 I'
up for is put up for bids. Unless there is no whoever has the low bid makes the contract already required to put that up to bid. Yes, the administration is state legislature. Well, they may be for, uh, forced at some time in the future to remove that requirement from the statute as fewer cities have city statute. local newspapers. No. Right. State 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 right. 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 There's plenty of uh, communities that are probably struggling with this right now that have maybe one newspaper that's charging them way too much because they're the only one that's there. <laughs> or, uh, you know, no, or they just don't have any. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it just seems like maybe this is an area to give some flexibility um, for, for the city going forward because things may change in, before the next charter review meeting. Maybe it's just adding to what the clerk already does. I think if we try it, if there's another clerk that comes along, having a bid. <laughs> um, and then I decided that, 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 that it's just too much trouble to do that kind of posting of the ordinances because it's a real drag. Mm -hmm. I, I think if the newspaper folds, mm -hmm. then that's a that's an issue that the council can take up at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. That's a contractual issue anyway. Are we locked into only being able to review this and change this every five years? Yes. 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 The council can't call them. No. Uh, but is it, I'm just wondering if there's another type of posting, for instance, like like posting in the four different places. Uh, you described, you know, post, posting, um, you know, the typical billboards or, or whatever, um, plus the website. And I wonder if that, that you know, uh, and then say the newspaper is available. Or something like that. Um, you know, all, all we're saying is the council passes something, and then the public's notified of what's passed. This is the ordinance that the council passed, and that has to be up for whatever it is. Um, it has to be published once a week for two consecutive weeks. That's all it is. It's a notification to the public that the council did such and such. They changed an ordinance, or they put a new ordinance in. It's a notification process to the public that this was done. And, and that's also, all it is. It's not also, it's not really also responds to the state law that says you have to have a paper official newspaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that it, it's more specific than that because it does require specific things. And the change that I think you're requesting is saying we'd like to insist that it's posted on the website because that mm -hmm. would access more people. I well, think those are those are specific to the simplest way to do it. It's just add add to the website. Add it to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll make great, uh, I'll, I'll move that uh, Section 7.10 Publication Board is a resolution to insert the clause after the city uh, and on the city's website uh, before they become effective and operative. Second version of the amendment should be published in the newspaper of the city as well as on the city's website within 30 days after their passage. Second. So it's just. Could we? I, I like how you said official website but on that the last one. Could you oh, you say that one? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> Section 7.12, ordinance repealed or suspended, no ordinance or section thereof shall be repealed or suspended except by ordinance adopted in the manner provided in this charter. All right, you remember that. All right. Section 7.13. Ordinances and resolutions filed, recorded, and certified. Ordinances and resolutions as evidence. All ordinances and resolutions shall be filed and safely kept by the city clerk, duly recorded, and certified by the clerk, in books kept for that purpose, and marked city ordinances and city resolutions, respectively. And record and record sentence. You can record copies there are certified by the city clerk, or the originals there are, shall be prima facie evidence. Contents of such ordinances or resolutions, and that the due passage and publication of the same, it shall be admissible in evidence in any court of this state or in any proceeding where the contents of such ordinance or resolution or any of them is in question, provided, however, that nothing herein contained be shall be construed to prevent the proof of the passage and publication of any ordinance or resolution in the matter otherwise prescribed by law. Now that's a wonderful proposition. <laughs> All it says is the city court has to keep uh, records in a book, uh, of which, which is David Gore and uh, right. 7.14 Procedure for Adoption by Reference Code or Public Record, Part A. The Council may enact the transitions of the code or public record theretofore in existence without setting forth such provisions that the adopting ordinance shall be published in full. At least three copies of the code or public record should be filed in the office of the city clerk and kept in the bag of for public use and inspection. A code or public record enacted by reference may be amended in the same manner. Um, I'd, I'd like to add the same thing when it says publish to include publishing to the official website. Mm -hmm. We already have a section about public. Yeah, if publish in full says that, then that implies. That oh, okay, okay, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, point. Yeah, point. So. All right, part B penalty clauses. No penalty clause shall be enacted by reference thereto. A penalty clause contained in a code or public record adopted by reference shall be set forth in full in the adopting ordinance. But sometimes it will say there won't be a reference. I got you. There should not be a reference. Anything else? Seven point one five. Recording of certain ordinances. All ordinances extending or changing the boundaries of the city, <coughs> zoning territory, or establishing or vacating of streets, alleys, or subdivisions after publication shall be recorded in the office of the county recorder of Cochise County. And after being so recorded, the same shall constitute public notice to all parties of the legal import there. This is again promising. Yeah, it's pushing the cost down to the county. Section 7.16, certification of ordinances. Any and all ordinances of the city which have been enacted and published in the manner required at the time of their adoption, which have not been repealed, may be compiled, consolidated, indexed, and arranged as a comprehensive ordinance code. And such code may be adopted by reference for the same effect as an ordinance by the best at the passage of any ordinance for such purpose. Such code need not be published in the matter required for other ordinances, but not less than three copies thereof should be filed for use in the examination by the public and office of the city clerk prior to the adoption thereof. Amendments to the code should be enacted in the same manner as ordinances. Any questions on that? Um, I, I had a note again uh, after the city clerk and published on the city's official website. But that doesn't make sense because we're talking about two copies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Next part. Yeah. The copy situation, mm -hmm. this was written, it had to do, of course, with uh, Xerox copies of mm -hmm. that ordinance being available. 
three copies was in case more than one person wanted to see it and so forth and so forth. But what we in fact do now, of course, is we have a computer sitting there. It's electronic. They come in and uh, they can sit down and we do have a, a printed copy that they can see, of course. But um, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to bring that up that I don't believe we officially have three printed copies sitting there because we have them. So I'm letting you know that. And is that really what you want? You really want us to have three printed copies there because we don't have an issue because we have electronic copies available. Well, it says that we would file, not necessarily the public display. We file. File for use and examination by the public. Well, if it's in a computer, it's going to be printed out. It can be printed out. That it means can. it's in a file. It has to be any time. Well, do, do we need to specify that? I think it seems wise. It's printed and printed and electronic. But if we need three copies, we can get three copies. Mm -hmm. So they can say, right, I want to see that three copies. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have them now. Unless, unless your city hall burns down and oh, all the computers so uh, so aren't there anymore. Well, well, we we yeah. set upside back up. Things are a little different. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just I don't I don't I again I'm just trying to bring that to your attention. That's what it says. We don't comply with the letter right. of the of the quote law because but we can if somebody can play. Right. Yes, ma'am, we can. So I don't think it's worth changing. Mm -hmm. right. Especially I agree with it. <laughs> so we move on to Article 8 in contracts. Section 8.01, formal rules by ordinance. The City Council shall establish by ordinance formal rules regulating the purchase by contract of goods and services by the city. Such ordinance shall specify the conditions pursuant to which competitive bidding shall be required, those conditions under which other means of procurement may be used. The ordinance cannot be enacted under an emergency clause. Yeah. Okay. We don't need point zero two purchase contacts or city improvements. City purchases. A. The manager shall con contract for and purchase or issue purchase after authorization for, for all supplies, materials, equipment, and services for the offices, departments, and agencies of the city. Okay. Contracts over five thousand dollars. That's the one that came up quite often. I have not got. Contracts should be executed for any city purpose over five thousand dollars in any city public works improvement, except where such improvement or purchase is authorized by the council to be executed directly by a city department in conformity with detailed plans, specifications, and estimates approved by the manager. The manager, with the approval of the city council, may enter into the contract with the contractor whose proposal is the most advantageous to the city concerning price, conformity to the specifications, and other factors. Thank you. Discussion point and discussion only. Um, should that be raised to $7,500 or something? $5,000 doesn't go a long ways. Um, it I used to be, uh, I just really don't, I don't know. You know I, that's kind of a, 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 a thing that, Comes out to the council and it's five grand. And right, it's going to be considered inflation. Yeah. Consider inflation. Yeah, well, it used to be 2500 uh, and uh, Steve Pop had asked it to be raised, and it was raised, so it, this is what, five, five years old right now. And quite honestly, um, you know, many cities are, are like 25000 and, mm -hmm. and so forth, because uh, it's really. We have a city manager that authorizes those things, mm -hmm. and we have uh, stops in place that if uh, our city manager was to authorize uh, expenditures that were inappropriate, then we can get rid of the city manager. You see, it's not a, the fact is, is we keep, we have a lot of business coming to the council of these $5,100 transactions or Six thousand and almost anything anymore um, requires action by the council. If that's what you want, that's fine. I'm just indicating that yes, sir, it does become you know somewhat burdensome uh, because five grand is just not that much.
much money anymore when it comes to running a city and buying things for a city. What, what do you think, Teresa? Well, I was going to ask, and I know what the current limit in the statute is. Mm-hmm. No, not off the top of my head, okay. I don't. But we can come back to you. To you with well, the we're not, we're not, didn't we have a group of uh-huh. uh-huh. over this last time? And mm-hmm. got some little festival or something, yeah. and uh, $5,000 was the topic and people said well yeah we should have an override of this over five thousand you know what five thousand one dollar you know well what what happened on that actually was that the then city manager tailored the bills so that they all came at five thousand dollars so that the council didn't have to approve them because it, it says over five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, so they were five thousand dollars, and so we didn't have to, or we didn't get them because he tailored them in such a way they weren't. He made sure that they weren't aggregated when they should have been, and so like one one group charged like ten thousand dollars, so he had them bill twice two five thousand dollar bills. So that was playing games with the situation. So you know, well, it's a seventy-five hundred. They can do the same thing. Well, of course they can. <laughs> well, so well, of course they can. I, I think five thousand dollars is we should keep it. So I I agree with you because I think that you, I mean, when you go to these uh, to the meetings and you you see the numbers, it's done in consent agenda usually, right? Um, the, the approval of those. No, no, these, these are coming. Yes, sir. Uh, these are separate items. So, well, we get descriptions of how the money is being spent, um, and it, it I think for me, it's in, enlightened me um, to, frankly, the competency, and um, it, it's given me a lot of, um, it's made me feel better about our city government because the presentations that are made are usually very, you know, Clean, appropriate things, or we need this many radios for the police, you know, or we need this, you know, this, that, or the other thing. And, and so, I mean, to me, it's nice to see those types of things. We, we saw, <clears throat> okay, you know, so the only thing that I, that I would say is maybe we could put something in here that deals with the, the, um, the scope of work concept, where if you, what? We're not ever going to get that. No. no. And, and my concern is that we'll keep, you know, we've, we've talked about this early on throughout the meetings, is that if we keep nitpicking all of this, we're not going to get any of the big changes. People are going to get so frustrated with us in our presentation to them for voting on this. You have to remember this has to go for the city council. I know. Mm-hmm. I, I just did a. Uh, a quick search of inflation from 2015 to today, mm-hmm. and a couple of different uh, monetary side sets between three and eight cents on the dollar mm-hmm. is the total inflation rate mm-hmm. for the last five years. And if you multiply that times five thousand dollars, it's only about four hundred bucks. I mean, maybe it'll be here, so it'll be here, it'll be a different thing. But, so, okay, so the, the scope of work thing to, to head off a, um, a, a city manager trying to break things out into under $5,000 families. You see what I'm saying? Is, I mean, yeah, they have, then we have to define scope of work. Well, that, that, that was taken care of. Yeah. It was? Oh, yeah, he was fired. Well, no, I'm saying that you're not right. supposed to so, do that. Right. Where is that laid out? That they're not supposed to do that, or, or what are the, the terms? I, I'm just thinking for like, you know, for a contractor, it's like anything that, you know, uh, is, you know, a job that is, uh, you can't break it up into all the painting and the, this, that, and the other thing. You have to, it, it has to be the number of the whole thing when you're talking about legal matters. So. I mean, I, I think that, that scope of just adding a scope of work in that scope of work to me, I, I don't understand what that means. Depending on the scope of work, $5,000 in order to 
just not, or maybe we just ask the lawyer what would, you know, what would be a, a you know, just a line in here that would address that so they can't break it up into, into small chunks. But, well, there's but why can't they? Anything I mean, can, you refer to the why, why not? I mean, that's, what they, that's what they do with all of them. They break it up into small chunks. They can break it up into small chunks. You know, you can't prohibit that. I mean, it just, you can't write, you can't write stuff in a code like this to prohibit something like that. What you have is you have systems in place, so it doesn't happen like it happened four years ago. But again, the action no, was taken from that. And that's the, the next section. But it was after okay. the new section. Any section. contract or purchase exceeding the sum of 5000 to require prior approval. So in the case where he's breaking up contracts, that would be. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the key word there is contractor, right? Any contractor purchased a contract. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the 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 and so we fired him. But he shouldn't have been able to do this because this should have been safeguard, but he was a city manager and the treasurer wasn't, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, however it was going down, there wasn't enough safeguard there. So but I don't think you can write that into this, but, but well, I thought because it just, you, know, you just can't get at it. It, sh it sh I mean, it should be assumed that what he, you know, he, he obviously knew what he was doing was wrong, right? And he did it anyway, so that's where you get the punishment. But anybody would know that that's not just, that's not what's said here. You're not supposed should. to break it up. It's a contract or a purchase. Okay, but it also should have been here over $5,000. He did it in 5000 increments. So what I'm saying is that so he is contracting for live sound, contracting for the stage. He's doing separate contracts for each different thing. Right. This right. this allows any contract or purchase. He's making right. separate contracts right. and purchases. Yeah. It, but there's nothing that says an overall project. Well, um, with, with, you know, if, if we added uh, an overall project. Well, that's that's you're talking specifically about construction contract. Mm -hmm. We're talking about like a festival. That's that, still a contract. Well, mm -hmm. only if you're hiring an outside agency to manage that festival for you, but they were not contracted. Yeah, I'm saying if you do that, but if you do it in house where you're doing separate contracts and you're hiring and managing it internally and you're making separate purchases and you do a fifty thousand dollar festival with no oversight because you're just making under five thousand dollar purchases and and um, contracts that this allows for that. <laughs> yeah, it does. You cannot put that kind of language in here that what you're trying to do is specificity. Because then it ties up anybody that's making purchases under five grand. I mean, it, you just can't put it in no. language. Purchases that's over five grand. But the purchases, purchases over five grand go to the council. They sign and go to the council. Anything over five thousand to one dollar go to the council. Part C, part C. And what are you saying? Was there anything illegal according to this charter? No, no. That no. Doing no, there was not. No. It wasn't. It was just unethical. Exactly. But there could be a, there could be something in here that. Uh, oh, would you propose? Because, because I would propose that there just be some language that says you, that you cannot break a particular project up into sub five thousand um, dollar, you know, purchases and contracts in order to avoid council oversight. So are you let, saying, me, let me uh, let me let me just give you an example for that. Uh, from my perspective, where I think that could be uh, really a, a problem. Let's say we're going to upgrade just uh, our, our solar our solar plants. That's the project. Upgrade the solar plant. Okay. Okay. And um, one of those things is 
um, that we need to hire a electrical engineer to come in for a feasibility study. That's one portion. Um, and another portion is parts, and another portion is the actual contractor to put those parts in and so forth. So you're saying that, um, that that may be spread out over a two year period. I'm saying that the, the proposal to upgrade the solar plant uh -huh. would have to go before council. That would include all the subcontracts below. But we wouldn't necessarily know what that is at that particular point. We know what we have to do, but we don't know who those are because separate RFPs have to be put out of each one of those uh, situations. And you wouldn't know until a feasibility study was done, right. exactly what needed to get done. And well, so, so you can do it in a phased thing, but I mean, why would something like upgrading the solar plant go in front of the, the city council? And so you get to the point where you have a set, set budget after you've done your RFPs, all of that stuff, and that budget needs to go in front of the city council. And yes, it has multiple subcontractors for less than $5,000 things in that, so you need an overall budget that's probably whatever, eight hundred thousand dollars or something that needs to be approved by the city council. Why wouldn't you want them to approve something like that? I recommend that we continue on through and then we get to such a time where you come back and redress that because we've got a lot of the reflections okay. that before you because that's what you're talking about. Yeah, because that's one of the things we were just sort of flying by here is it kind of over five thousand dollars and public works improvement. We're, we're talking about public works, we're not talking about concert. Okay, so section C is council print contracts over five thousand dollars. Any contract or purchase exceeding the sum of five thousand dollars shall require the prior approval of the council. Yes. We're in agreement on that. Okay. D contract alterations. Alterations in any contract may be made unauthorized by the council upon the written recommendation of the manager. Yes. Okay. Progressive payments. E. Any public works contract may provide for progressive payments. No contract for public works shall provide for an authorized or permit the payment of more than the amount required by state law before the completion of third work to be done under said contract and consent as thereof by the proper official department or council. Okay. Bid section point eight zero three. Any this advertisement for bids published by the city shall distinctly and specifically state the character of the city improvement, purchase, or kind of supplies, materials, equipment, and services required. Such notice shall be published at least once in the official newspaper, not less than five days prior to the opening of bids. Bidding shall be sealed by proposals only under such regulations as may be described by the council. The manager with approval of the council shall have the power to reject any and all bids and advertise for bids again. Excuse me, I would put in the hand out of the official website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the newspaper. Is it possible to make a general statement that wherever this is, I don't know, that's the same as the tender to candidate? I second. Okay, but I add that to the you make a motion. You make a motion. I did, but I, I, I will. I, I moved that in section 8.03 8 bid. That the bid shall be made only once in the official newspaper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That the clause and on the city's official website be inserted after the word newspaper and before the word not. Okay. Okay. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? Any all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Section 804, transfer of sale of personal property. The council may transfer to or between offices, departments, and agencies or sell at public auction certain less or obsolete personal property, including but not limited to supplies, materials, and equipment, subject to such regulations that the council may prescribe. Yeah. Okay. Section 8.05, transfer and sale of real property. The council may sell such portions of the real property of the city not needed or not likely to be needed within a reasonable future time. Each sale should be made on such conditions as the council may prescribe. <coughs> when bids are required or requested, the council <coughs> should have the right to reject any and all bids. Okay. 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 
fact that that's still a salesperson. Section 8086-806. Contracts are official advertising. Oh, here we come again. <laughs> Matters are official, but annually contracts are official advertising for the ensuing physical year. For this purpose, he shall he <laughs> she shall submit to each legal newspaper published in the city a notice describing the contemplated advertising and has some foreseeable proposals. The proposal shall specify the type and spacing to be used at the rate or rates named in the bid. The manager shall let the contract with such official advertising to the most responsible bidder published in the newspaper of general circulation in the city, provided that such bid shall not exceed the newspaper's published open rates, provided further that in his discretion he may <laughs> <laughs> reject any all bids and proceed to secure new bids in the matter provided therein. Here, the city newspaper in which the award for such advertising may should be known as designated as the official newspaper. Yeah. Um, I, make, yeah. I make a motion to change the word P after the word purpose to be they. And Dude, this memo is going to take care of that later. Oh, because I've got all the ginger things marked all the way through yeah. here. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Oh, manager. We use manager in here several times. Like, mm -hmm. but, but I think if you read this, this is going to take care of all the ginger. Yeah. I think that we should refer to that letter. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Considered later. Aside from the Walmart, too, but not bring it up. Withdrawn. 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 Okay. <laughs> Section 8.07, fraud and collusion. Any member of the council or any officer or employee of the city who shall aid or assist a bidder in securing a contract to furnish labor, materials, equipment, supplies, or services at a higher price than that proposed by any other bidder, or who shall favor one bidder over another by giving or withholding information. Or shall who shall willfully mislead any bidder in regard to the character of the labor, material, equipment, and supplies of service, this calls for or the condition under which the proposed work is to be done, or who shall only accept materials, supplies, or equipment of a quality inferior to those called for by any contract, or who shall no one is certified to a greater amount of labor or service performed that has been actually performed, or to receive of a greater amount of different kind of material, supplies, or equipment than other than has been actually been received shall be guilty of a misdemeanor, and upon conviction there shall be removed from office. Wow, that's like I knew that 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 I knew I understand what's going on, but I know. Give me. Oh, you can give me. Yeah, yeah. Insider trading. Yeah, this is where the North Korea. Yeah. So, hey, okay, listen, your competition gave us a bit of advance. Yeah, yeah. 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 50, 50 grand. Yeah. 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 But it also says that you would be, uh, you know, if, if I knew that, uh, that another contractor had done something fraudulent and I give that information favoring the not fraudulent the contractor over the, you know, the, the straight one, then I'm, I'm guilty of fraud. That's no, correct. Yeah. No, you're not a member of the council. Yeah. No, but anyone providing that Council, if they know something, okay, that, that, that I found out that this person's a crook. If I give that information oh, that's and it favors one person over the other, that's not right. Yeah. That's, that's not, not what right. yeah. 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 we should be talking about, but that's what it says. No, no, no. it's no, just here. dealing with the contract. Yeah, just contract. Yeah. So, yeah. so eight and sister getting it's to buy interest to find that is fraud and collusion. Yeah. No, I understand the general context, but it says, well, who shall favor one bidder over another by giving or withholding information to the right. bidders. It doesn't, you know, right. that's right. one parent, right. 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 the first part of the first sentence, which is the whole paragraph. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who shall aid or assist a bidder. Yeah. 
by in securing a contract to furnish labor materials, etc., etc., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera or who shall favor one bidder over another by giving or withholding information. It doesn't say to a bidder. It says who shall aid or assist a bidder. It's the information given to a bidder. That's not followed by the whole thing. Yes, it does. Yeah, if, he, if, he, if he's followed the, the, the grammatical, the punctuation, it does. Yes. yes. Okay. okay, so the, how about the line, or who shall willfully mislead any better in regard to, to the character of the labor? Those yeah. are the thing. That's the same oh, okay. thing over again, anyway. Yeah. Those are sequences of, a, of things, or right. preceded by a comma, or preceded by a comma. Those are equal things. According to the to the punctuation, Mr. And I'll go on. Sure. Um, uh, something that runs through my mind is we have in this particular paragraph or word or sentence, "Not <laughs> shall a or such a bitter." Can we insert bitter slash vendor? No. No. Insert a contract slash service. Vendor has to be in. A vendor becomes a bidder. Well, we're defining fraud and collusion. So, right. And we were talking about any purchases or, or malfeasance in uh, purchases over five thousand dollars. No, 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 no. A vendor is going to have to bid over five thousand dollars. Right. We're not talking about five thousand dollars. No, no, I'm trying to improve that. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think it's it any bid. Any bid is free. Publicly available information, for instance, about fraud, would not be material to helping a bidder because it's because it's publicly available information. What they're trying to get at is private information. Mm -hmm. that, I, I think that's how I read it. So when you talk about fraud, when you're saying, yeah, I'm going to hire a prize and propose. Then another bidder shall pay for one bidder over another, beginning with all the information, who shall work with this lead any bidder in regard to the character of labor. It's pretty specific. Yeah, all the yeah. sentence, but it's pretty it specific. Is. It's specific. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But I just want to yes. let you know why I'm like this about this is I, I used to have a job um, analyzing insurance contracts mm -hmm. and going through them and, and finding things that had to be. Yeah, and it was like. <laughs> Very thorny stuff, but then we have to run through the lawyer. So I've done this a lot, and I'm, I'm not bringing these up just to be a pain in the ass. It's like these are things that end up being litigated, litigated afterward. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it, it is, you know, but well, I mean, it, it's probably not going to be a problem for us to move on. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on then. Yeah. Section, section 8.08. 8. Avoidance of contacts made through fraud and collusion. <laughs> Here we go. If at any time it shall be found that the person to whom the contract has been awarded has been presented any bid or bids colluded with any other party or parties for the purpose of preventing any other bid being made, then the contract so awarded shall be null and void, and the manager shall advertise a new bid for said city improvements and or supplies, materials, equipment, and services required. Or the council may provide such public work to be done by the city by the city under the direction of the manager. That's <laughs> yeah. That's just what Section three point zero nine, personal interest. The provisions of the laws of this state relating to and defining conflicts between interest to all officers and employees of the city should <laughs> 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 Special. 
all other municipal election, elections than to be held by authority of this charter for any law should be one that is special election. That doesn't come up very often. Okay. And moving on to section 9.02, applications of state law. The provisions of the laws of this state relating to and governing the nomination of elective officers and the conduct of elections in each and every provision of said law, with all amendments thereto, shall apply and shall govern the nomination of elective officers and the conduct of elections, except as otherwise provided in this charter. The council shall have the power to make judicial <coughs> provisions relating to the nomination of officers and to the conduct of elections, not contrary to the provisions of the laws of the state or the provisions of the charter. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. 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 That's, that's interesting. So I wonder if that's like it's like indicating that it's um the not the letter of law that is the basic meaning of it. Yeah. It, 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 it's very yeah. yeah. maybe we should put repugnant as much as it is. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, the case of electors of registration section nine zero three. The qualifications. The qualifications of the electors shall be required as required by the Constitution and laws of this state or state and county to be electors. B. Registration. Registration of voters shall be in accordance with state and federal law. Section 904. Qualification of candidates. Qualification of candidates shall be prescribed in Article 2, Section 2.207. Section 905, arrangements and names on the ballot. Mayor, a, the name of the candidates for mayor should be arranged on the ballot as provided by law, and nothing on the ballot should be indicative of the source of the candidacy or of the support of any candidate. Neutrality. B, council members and names of the candidates for councilor should be arranged by the board they represent, and as provided by law. Nothing on the ballot shall be indicative of the source of the candidacy or the support of the candidate. How are they arranged by law? Uh, no. Random. Oh, really? Random. Randomly. No, they're not up. I don't think they're random. They're random. Pulled out of a hat. Because these are not parts in office. I mean, I know at the state level, I think Republicans are uh, first on the ballot and the Democrats. Yeah, but we're talking about candidates with candidates. Yeah. Candidates with them are random. Okay. And now I guess to have to bring incumbent except for a superior court judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because you're not, you're only voting every day. Yes, you yeah. know. Yeah. All right, section 9.06 nomination for primary election. A petition. Nomination for primary election shall be by petition or of nomination. Which shall consist of the third form of auxiliary thereof, which shall be furnished to applicants by the city court. B, in addition to petitions for nomination of mayor, shall contain the signatures of qualified voters, aggregating not less than 5%, no more than 10% of the total number of elected voting of the last preceding municipal election to the office of the mayor. If this does move around, is that a population? Is that a question? Yeah. yeah. Because they, they, they have to be checked. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Be be because they don't want to, somebody to turn in a huge amount and having to verify. Yeah, they're just going out yeah. the names. Yeah, they're right. going, all right, man. We could. Yeah. Can't verify that. Oh, yeah. All right. You cannot. Exactly. They see council members or petitions, petitions for nomination of a council member. So contain the signatures of the qualified voters, aggregating not less than five percent, no more than ten percent of the number of elected voting for the mayor for mayor in the nominees for the last preceding election, for which the mayor was elected. In the nominee board, not for the city. We're talking about council. Oh council down. Okay, excuse me. Okay, D nomination notes of qualification. Nominating papers and conditions shall be presented to the city clerk not less than 90 days, no more than 120 days before the date set for the primary election, and that was required by state law for nonpartisan elections. The city clerk shall endorse for each document the date and the time, and the same was received by the court, and shall determine that the signatures contained therein are sufficient prior to causing the qualifying candidacy to be printed on the ballot. Those who 
begin with the candidate within five days of receipt of admission if the qualification is set to cash. Section 9.07, majority elect in the primary. A mayor, the primary election any candidate for mayor who shall receive a majority of all votes cast for that office shall be declared elected to the office and no further election shall be held in the office. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, go back to D on the um, question. Is, is, is that uh, five days after the Receipt of, the receipt of the petition, is that sufficient time for the clerk to, to um, check that all of the um, those names are in check? Mm -hmm. Just that there's a number. Mm -hmm. Just the, the number. number is there. Oh, you know, okay. Fail to check it to get this question. Okay. And the council members at the primary election, any candidate for council member who shall receive Majority of all votes cast for said offices in such an election shall be quickly declared elected. The office in which he or she is a candidate, not a he or she. <laughs> no further elections be held with said office. Section 9.08 Nomination for General Election. Mayor, in a primary election, one candidate for mayor does not receive a majority of the votes cast at large. The two candidates for the highest number of votes will be considered nominated, and their names will appear on the ballot of the general election. In case of a tie for second place, that, the, that candidate with the highest number of votes, and those tied for second place, will appear on the ballot of the general election. B, council member, if in a primary election, one candidate for council member can award does not receive the majority of votes cast at large for council member, then the two candidates with the highest number of votes should be considered nominated and their names will appear on the ballot of the general election. In case of a tie for second place, that candidate with the highest number of votes and those tied for second place will appear on the ballot of the general election. Has this occurred before? Primary elections are held 
from the state, said by the state of Arizona to qualify on there in the even number of years. Section 9.11, last time of polling election election, general election be held on the date of the state of Arizona for November election by the even number of years. Right there. 9.12, special election. The council should provide the time, manner, and means of voting in a special election in accordance with state law. Okay. Section 9.13, early voting. Early voting shall be allowed in the manner provided by state law. Section 9.14, canvassing returns and the declaring of election results within, time, within the time period required, period required by the state law. The married council shall canvass returns and declare the results of such election. The city clerk shall issue a certificate to each candidate elected to office in any election. In 9.15, alignment of ward boundaries. Within 12 months of the effective date of this charter and using the 1980 census official count, the council shall reapportion and realign the boundaries of wards. Such realignment shall ever be made within 12 months after release of official census information as necessary to comply with applicable laws and to result in wars, no one which is more than 5% larger in population than any other. The 1980? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's the easier census. Well, that's where it started. Now we go by official census. The latest census. They just go for official census if necessary. And this does charge you 10 years. This is the Do you want to try such article 10? Yes. And call? Yes. 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 Oh, I'm so proud of that right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 My end is Okay, article 10. Initiative, referendum, and recall. Section 10.01 Initiative, referendum, and recall. There is hereby reserved to the electors of the city the powers of the initiative and referendum and of the recall of the elected officials. Officials. The provisions of the Constitution and general laws of this state, as the same now exist or hereafter may be amended, governing the initiative and referendum and the recall of elected offices shall apply to the use thereof in the city, so far as such provisions are not in conflict with the provisions of this charter. Section 10.02, submission of measures for electors. The mayor and council may on their own motion submit to the electors in any election or ordinance, any ordinance, referendum, or measure, measures, I'm not sure we're reading that to me, measures that the mayor and council of the qualified electors of the city shall have authority to enact or submit to referendum in the same manner as provided in this charter, ordinance, or measures submitted on petition. The special election call under the position of the charter. There should be no bar to submission by the council or other questions to the vote of the electors in addition to the ordinances or measures here in July. Here, here. Okay, so we're at almost 7 o'clock. Make a motion to adjourn. Now we can discuss it. Now we can discuss it. I'm sorry. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.